We're here with the West Midlands Partnership today talking about practice education. I know they've got a really um, comprehensive um, comprehensive slides and videos to show you, so I'm just going to hand over to them and let them do that. Sorry, I think I said West Midlands Partnership, I mean teaching partnership. Um, just a reminder to turn your cameras off. Thanks for everyone. OK, Adam, I'll hand over to you. OK, thank you. So um, a warm welcome to, to colleagues and um, it's we're really excited to spend a little bit of time with you. My name is Lee, Lee Pardin McLaughlin. Um, I'm, I've had the um, opportunity to be the chair of the West Midlands Social Work Teaching Partnership. Um, the teaching partnership consists of um, 28 partners, um, which are universities and a college of further education and the 14 regional local authorities, adults and children's local authorities and the children's trust that make up the West Midlands Social Work Teaching Partnership. It's the largest teaching partnership in the country. Um, it's been both challenging um, and indeed insightful in terms of how um, we've worked um, both over the last 12 months and obviously in our previous uh, previous couple of years. Um, I just want to just share something with you before I hand across um, to, to, to my colleagues and hand across to Zoe. Um, I, I reflected on my own journey um, as a children and family social worker over the last uh, 25 years. And there's a lovely um, quote that I thought would be really helpful. Um, I want practice education to be revered. I want practice education to be seen as, um, you know, one of the most amazing opportunities for social workers to support and develop student social workers. And I want to just share this with you, and this really um, fits and dovetails in with something from my heart, really. And it goes something along like this. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. I'll pause now and hand across to Zoe. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. You've stolen a lot of my uh, my first bit of the presentation, so forgive me if I repeat anything to anybody. Um, we really want to welcome you to our presentation for Social Work England. We're really, really glad to be here sharing our strategy with you. As Moenna said, um, cameras and mics are off and captions are an option, but we have noticed that in our practices, the um, captions sometimes go a little bit rogue. So if there's any words that look a little bit unusual or you want any clarity, just pop it in the chat and we'll we'll try and give you that clarity. Um, speaking of the chat, again, this is where please put questions in as we go along and we're going to be collating them so that we can answer as many of them at the end as possible. Next slide, please, Adam. So this lovely slide, <laughs> it shows the speakers you'll hear from today, Cheryl, Sukfir, Laura and I. It doesn't, however, show some of the other crucial members of our programme team, such as Adam, who is in the background and did not want his photo on, um, and Rachel, who's um, who have been involved in supporting us with the development of this session, um, as well as kind of across our teaching partnership as a whole. Next slide, please. So a little bit um, like what Lee said, really, we are one of 23 accredited social work teaching partnerships funded by the Department for Education. Um, we're also the largest, like Lee alluded to there, that comes with amazing benefits and collaboration, but also some complications and difficulties in coordinating so many people, so many local authorities, children's trusts, NHS trusts and HEIs. Um, we're now sustainable via partner funding and able to utilise Department for Education funding to support and develop our initiatives across the partnership, which is a phenomenal place to be in. And we're really proud of that um, evidence in the, you know, the significance of what we're doing as a teaching partnership. Next slide, please. So here is a visual representation of our um, employer and HEI partners. Obviously, like you can see there, it's quite large. And I'm really, um, as people were waiting in the lobby, um, I've recognised that there are some of our partners here today, which is fantastic to have you with us, um, because we honestly wouldn't be able to do what we do um, without your involvement. It's very much a collaborative effort. Um, so we split this um, the West Midlands into North, Central and South subregions, which Laura Sukvir and I are the consultant social workers for, respectively, with oversight from Cheryl. And like I said, you'll hear from, from all of us um, today to talk about this practice education strategy that we're so, so proud of. Um, next slide, please, Adam. So 
our vision um, is the teaching partnerships vision, um, which links in really well with our um, perhaps education strategy. We want to achieve excellence in social work education and professional practice. So right from the very beginning, all the way through um, people's careers as social workers across the teaching partnership. And we feel that this strategy, strategy ties in with that vision really well. Um, and, and we've split the um, presentation into where we were, where we are and where we want to be. So I'll hand over to Laura now, who's going to discuss the where we were section of this presentation. Thanks, Zoe. And hi, everybody. So as Zoe said, I'm going to start by talking through where we were. And this offers some context um, and sets the scene really for how this work started and what it was informed by. So this presentation today looks at um, the action and approach we've taken during 2020 into this first part of, 20, of 2021. So um, to start with, um, I'm going to talk about ongoing um, and long-standing challenges to practice education, which aren't unique to the West Midlands, um, but have informed this work. Um, so that's around the sufficient quantity and quality of practice education and retention of practice educators. So um, they won't be a surprise to hear that that has informed our work. So, and then further to that, it goes without saying that the COVID-19 pandemic um, has caused significant challenge to practice education. So in early 2020, um, as a West Midlands region, we had many paused and suspended placements um, amongst our um, partners. And that was caused by the sudden and unexpected move to remote working um, at the start of the pandemic, um, a lack of confidence in practice educators at, and also in employers and, and um, organisations and team managers of assessing and supporting practice educators with this new way of working um, that at that time, you know, none of us um, knew about, you know, we hadn't experienced it before. Um, so to how to assess and support a student social worker appropriately with that remote working. But also the increased demands upon social work teams. So the pandemic itself, COVID-19 has caused um, increased demands upon teams, but also the associated restrictions and um, our employer partners needing to prioritise um, their workers accordingly um, with pressures due to the pandemic, um, which unfortunately in some instances moved away from um, the student placements being the priority. So we were left with a number of placements needing to be reset and recovered. And, the, and that sets the scenes um, and has heavily informed this, this work that um, we're going to talk to you about today. Another factor that's informed um, where we were and sets the scene in the context is around regional variation. So as has been mentioned by um, Zoe and Lee, the um, West Midlands Social Work Teaching Partnership is the largest with 18 employer partners. So with that naturally comes a lot of variation in how practice education um, is organised um, within each of those um, employer partners and HEIs. Um, so in 2019, the Teaching Partnership commissioned um, some research, practice education evaluation, which was carried out by Staffordshire University, which highlighted some of this variation really in things such as um, workload relief for practice educators, payment for practice educators for their specific part of their role. We also know there's um, regional variation in things such as practice education strategies that organisations have, the way that um, placement coordination is um, arranged within different organisation um, and the relationship and collaboration between some of our employer partners and HEI partners. So overall, um, this has highlighted um, variation in how practice educators, the, the role of the practice educator is valued and recognised um, across the region. So those three things really, the ongoing um, and long-standing challenges, the 
impact of COVID-19 and um, those regional variations due to being such a large teaching partnership as what's gone on to inform this work. So the rest of the presentation will look at the work that has been undertaken, um, where we are now and where we want to take that forward. And we really do, uh, as um, mentioned in our vision, strive for excellence within practice education um, within the region. So next we're going to see um, a short clip, the first of three short clips from our partners, um, and this is um, a HEI perspective on the practice education um, strategy. Adam, we practice education. Yeah. I'm part of the working group that's developing a uh, regional practice education strategy. I'm part of a newly formed forum for those of us who lead practice educator qualifying courses within the region. And I've also been uh, delivering online practice educator refresher workshops that have been facilitated by the teaching partnership. There are four between August 2020 and February 2021. So I think one of the first things to say about the um, the benefit, the difference it's making in it being involved in the teaching partnership is that it is an oasis of cooperation and collaboration in apparently in a seemingly otherwise quite competitive um, world. And, and that in itself is a very beneficial space to be in that collaborative and cooperative space in particular two of the, the initiatives that I'm involved in, in are very beneficial. The development of the practice educator, uh, practice education um, strategy across the region, and then the forum for the leads of practice educator courses. In particular, there's some, there's some uh, extraordinarily generous colleagues in other universities across the region who through the teaching partnership uh, have been able to share um, the course that they have developed for regaining currency that is that is uh, available um, for other HEIs to access as well. So, th so that has been very, very beneficial. The forum for those of us who are course leads in the practice educator uh, qualifying courses, uh, that forum is offering us the opportunity to exchange information about how we're um, recruiting, sharing good practice, exchanging information around the recruitment and selection of people appropriate to come into practice education. And it's also more widely enabling us to share our different understandings, our different interpretations of the practice educator professional standards in order for us, even if we never reach complete uniformity in those interpretations, at least some harmony across the region about our understanding of them. The significant challenges um, for the coming year are the development of placement capacity. And another uh, challenge is to gain some uh, proper recognition of practice educators, the importance of their role and a recognition that values uh, the expertise that they have in practice education and um, finds a voice for them, enables them to find a voice within practice education as a collective. The single, the single thing that I would most like to see within the next year is the development of a collective voice for practice educators. We talk a lot about practice education, but without practice educators, there is no practice education. And I think that it is significantly important to enhance their recognition. We can all be involved in practice education, whether we're teaching in classrooms, whether they're physical or online classrooms, or whether we're in practice, because the whole of social work education is about enabling students to learn for and about practice, but they can only learn to practice in practice. And therefore the role, recognition, respect for our practice educators uh, needs to be enhanced and an opportunity for them to 
form a collective if that is what they would like to do is one of the things I would like to see the teaching partnership facilitating uh, in the next 12 months. Um, so thank you Laura for introducing where we were um, and to Annie for participating in that video. There's a bit of an echo, I'm not sure whether that was for everyone or just me. Um, but I'm going to hand over to Cheryl now, who's our programme manager, who will be speaking to you about where we are now. Thanks, Zoe. So as a new programme team in June last year, we had a planning session to look at the implementation plan for the teaching partnership, which had developed earlier on in the, the spring of 2020. So we all got together in a big room, as we were allowed to do then, um, lots of flip charts around the, the room, and, and looked at our plan, which linked to the Department for Education funding and had been agreed by employers and universities within our partnership. So a significant number of activities within the plan focused on placements and practice educators, although they were separated into different work streams, which those of you that are, are in a teaching partnership will be familiar with. So we could see that the references to practice educators and to, to placements were all interlinked. So, for example, providing placements links to the number of practice educators, uh, and this is directly related to how practice educators are supported and valued and whether they have opportunities to undertake the continuing professional development. So the quantity and the quality of placements are intertwined, they're inextricably linked. So as a team, we thought it would be helpful if we mapped all of these activities and brought them together to form a regional practice education strategy. So it has a, an overarching objective of improving the quality, the quantity and the sustainability of placements, and obviously with a particular focus on statutory placements in line with the, uh, the National Teaching Partnership objectives. So we tested this thinking with our partners uh, and through our governance boards within the, the partnership and we formed a practice education strategy working group. So we've got representatives from all the three sub regions, from employers and from HEIs uh, and this group oversees the, the elements of this strategy. So this diagram represents our strategy. Uh, and it shows our main areas of focus and activities to date, but it will be uh, reviewed periodically and evolve. So the activities in the green are completed or ongoing. The text in orange or amber, um, those are activities underway and the one in black is yet to start. So originally we had a separate section focusing on anti-racist and anti-oppressive practice, but we decided in one of our early meetings as a group that this needed to be an overarching theme within the, within the teaching partnership and it should run through all partnership activities. So it's embedded within all the sections of this practice education strategy and Sukhbir will um, give an example of that uh, later on. So I'll outline the activities in green now and then Sukhvir will follow on looking at the, the ones um, in, in amber. So start off with placements and this links very much to, to what uh, Laura was saying um, earlier on. Um, in terms of contingency planning for continuing placements and some of the challenges that were faced by organisations, by practice educators, teams, students in terms of responding to, um, you know, to the challenges created by, by COVID. So uh, we have a HEI reference group within the partnership 
and this group liaised with Social Work England and considered different approaches around the country for continuing placements and they've developed a contingency document for continuing placements. So it provides options for the universities in, in terms of how to continue the placements if they can't proceed as normal. And it is being used by a small number of, of students at the moment. We have a, we had a HEI reference group this morning actually and had a report on how it was being used across the partnership. And I know it's going to be reviewed in consultation with Social Work England over the next few weeks. And it has been really helpful um, to, you know, to have that as, uh, as universities, organisations and, and students. So at the same time, um, in the summer last year, we we was we put in a bid to the Department for Education for additional funding to support the reset and recovery of placements. And this resulted in some practice education projects, um, which we'll look at on the on the next slide. We we got that funding through in the, the autumn. So if we move down to the, the next bullet point on, on placements, which is the team around the student. So in considering how we could support practice educators, we wanted to formally recognise that student sits within a team and the whole team can and should contribute to the student's learning and assessment. So we looked at how this fits with developing a learning organisation and we've developed a webinar, which is on our website, which features the perspectives of students, team managers, and practice educators in supporting the student within the team. So moving down to strategies at the bottom, we were informed, that our work here was informed by looking at what's working across the partnership at the moment. And we know a number of organisations have developed a practice education strategy. But we also looked into some research which was done by Mark Dole um, into effective practice learning in local authorities 15 years ago. And we felt that this was still relevant. We know it was quite a while ago, um, but we felt it was still relevant in terms of embedding practice education within organisations. So the context has changed. You know, we've obviously got a different regulator, but the key elements in terms of um, developing practice education, delivering practice education, we felt remain the same. So we so we used that research to inform the, the strategy. Uh, and as we see it, the, the key elements include looking at quantity, so the supply and the demand of placements. So determining the number of placements provided, which was links to the number needed by local universities, the demand. Um, and recruitment needs of employers, uh, in relation, particularly in relation to their NQSWs, and linking this to the number of experienced practice educators, um, the succession of practice educators, and those needing to be trained. So another element we felt was looking at processes, data information systems, and organisational systems, to support planning and coordination. So who's accountable for practice education within an organisation? Who champions it and how is it delivered? You know, what, what are the models for delivering practice education? Is it through hubs, through specialist practice educators? Is it a blended model? What works best for that organisation? Where's the evidence that that is, that is working well? Then looking at quality, so valuing and supporting practice educators, looking at career progression, whether the practice educator role is embedded within you know, specific roles, looking at whether practice educators receive payments, um, you know, a number of different ways in which practice educators can be valued and supported. And linking to, to that, you know, how can we really enhance the students' learning? You know, should we be providing group sessions and how can we quality assure placements using Quapple or something similar? 
And how is that actually used? How is Quapple used? Is it used as just an audit? Is it used to provide feedback to practice educators? Is that happening routinely? And how can this support practice educators to develop? And then how can the universities and the organisations link that to the CPD that's, that's needed? So there's a lot to take into account, but it can be done. And we know some of our employers are are doing that really well and, and most are working towards developing a practice education strategy and we've developed self-audit which is based on the the Mark Dole um, research and a short guide on strategies which um, which are available on our website. So then moving across to practice educator CPD and looking at the community's practice. So these essentially are groups where practice educators can come together to share learning, to discuss challenges, exchange good practice. And they are happening locally and sub-regionally. They're different formats, um, but generally adhering to some terms of reference that are developed by our consultant social workers and agreed through the uh, teaching partnership. And then moving up to, to PEPs, and, and Annie's just spoken about the, the PEPs program lead network. Um, She's essentially sharing good practice approaches to delivering PEPS programs and promoting a shared understanding of the, the PEPS refresh across, I think we've got about five different PEPS programs across the, the partnership. PEP certification there um, is about providing a certificate to all practice educators who successfully complete PEPS within our partnership. As some, we found out that some don't actually receive a university certificate depending on the um, you know how it's organized within universities so it's part of valuing and supporting our practice educators can move on to the next slide please so this is giving some examples of the funded projects uh, funded by the department for education as i say with the, the additional um, money that we received in the in the autumn so they all address the needs of partner organisations and they all meet those three criteria of improving quantity, quality uh, and sustainability. You know, we have had some challenges um, in, in starting some of those projects you know, due, to, due to COVID, due to workload pressures, but they are all underway now, um, but, but will be completing at different times depending on the, the type of, of project. So some examples in relation to student hubs and units. Um, we've got a newish initiative where one local authority is developing placements within early help in children's services. So you've got work based supervisors who haven't had students before who have been supported by an independent practice educator um, and received uh, additional training as a workplace supervisor. Um, as well as that, some of the social workers within Early Help are now undergoing um, PEPS training. So we're hoping that that's going to be sustainable in the future. Um, and we've had eight additional student placements through that, that project. Another example uh, is with an NHS Health Trust. Um, and this is the next video clip we've got coming up. So this is where students are coming together with an experienced practice educator who's part of a learning academy for group supervision and to support networking um, and being given teaching by this practice educator. So it's a project to support the, the practice educators. So the, the group supervision they will have um, is an alternative to having the individual supervision for, for some, uh, some weeks. So they have a teaching session one afternoon, they're given structured activities, which they do as a group, and then they report back to the group to share their learning from the activities. So that's working really well, and the organisation is rolling it out across their, their organisation. In terms of supporting practice educators, I think Laura, Laura talked about this earlier as well. I mean, we recognise that you know, practice educators have had some sort of huge challenges um, in terms of continuing the, the placements during the, the pandemic. And some were saying that 
hopefully perhaps the students are contacting perhaps educators more now because they're not in an office space or some of them aren't in an office space. So it was an added challenge uh, for practice educators and that we recognised that they, they needed additional support. So some of the projects are focusing on developing coaching and mentoring skills, yeah, development programmes, um, looking at assessing and supervising remotely in particular, some additional support for those undertaking the PEPS training and they're also developing toolkits as well. And developing practice education strategies, as I've, I've previously said. So the outputs and the reports from all of these projects will be shared as they're completed over the next few months, and they'll be they'll be put on our on our website. So please look out for them. So the next clip will look at the a student um, hub in an NHS trust within our partnership. Good morning, I'm Karen Nixon, I'm Principal Social Worker within Midlands Partnership NHS Trust. So the benefit within the student units for the organisation and the teaching partnership, it provides a really consistent induction um, for the students across the organisation. So whichever um, training association that you, you come from, if you are a student to the organisation, it, it really doesn't matter. And we have student units that are developed within the organisation across the, the, the county of Staffordshire. Um, the benefits for that student unit development is really to provide an excellent placement for our students coming to join the organisation. Not only that, it's also supporting the practice educators, staff, work-based supervisors and mentors from both a leadership perspective within the organisation and also to develop excellent social work practice within the regional teaching partnership. I'm Lorraine Hawley, I'm a student social worker, currently completing my 100 days placement with the Century team at Leap Moorlands. Hi, I'm Charlotte, I'm a student social worker. Um, I'm currently completing my final placement with um, Leap Moorlands team. So my name's Alicia, I'm 21. I'm a student social worker in my final year at Staffordshire University. Now I'm in my last placement at Morland's House at MPFT um, and I am on the elderly and physical disabilities team. Um, it's been a really good team to work for so far. Everyone's really lovely and supportive. For me, since being part of the student unit has enabled me to increase my knowledge and understanding of the, the chosen topics. And having the unit has given me the opportunity to discuss different scenarios, which has been valuable for our social work training. The student uni unit have definitely um, made a big difference and helped me to settle in more, um, providing me with you know, students that are in similar positions as me, completing their placements. Um, I've made um, lifetime friends. Being a part of the student unit um, has been really helpful for me throughout my placement and I think it's been really helpful just to talk to peers and it's really reassuring to know that you're not the only one that's nervous about certain things and there's always other students there to talk to. It has also increased my confidence when speaking within a group setting. It's an excellent way of being reflective the student uni has been a massive part of my placement. So, um, thank you, Cheryl, um, and to Karen from MPT, as well as the students who took part in that video for us there. Um, we're now going to hand over to Sukhvir, who's going to talk to you about where we want to be and where we want to move this strategy forward. So over to Sukhvir. Sorry, I have just muted you, Sukhvir, because of the um, echo. So if you want to unmute yourself. 
Okay, yeah. Can I go now? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So, yeah, so where do we want to be in terms of quality? So we need to ensure that there is good support for our practice educators via things like community practice, support groups uh, and relevant CBD. And we want to continue to improve the support that we give our practice educators because we know it's so essential in ensuring we provide good quality placement experiences for our students. We also want to pro promote the community of practice within some of the regions where they haven't yet been established. And this will be supported by our new consultants of workers. We also want to share some of the resources and good practice examples with our practice educators from the practice education projects that Cheryl spoke about just a bit ago. We also want to continue um, to develop our CPD offer for our um, practice educators. We know that's really, really important for our practice educators. And we've already got things planned. So, for example, in May, we're going to be... Um, completing a CPD session on promoting equality and diversity in the practice learning environment. So we want to ensure the ongoing of our quality of practice educators. We also want to ensure that each organisation and partner is a learning organisation essentially. So Cheryl's spoken a bit about the team around the student model and the workshop that took place early on in January. And we had some great feedback in relation to this. But what we want to ensure is that it has made an impact in terms of those teams, in terms of practice. So we want to continue to promote that message of learning organisations and supporting partners in not just providing students with a practice educator and a practice supervisor, but also a team that really supports the development of students. We want to ensure that at least that students have at least one statutory placement and we're nearly there in terms of this, which is great. Um, but we want to try and uh, try and ensure all students have the same opportunity. We want to provide students with the right experience and to support their journey into social work. And in order to do this, we want to look at the workforce data analytics that we've completed to forward plan in terms of placements. We want essentially confident and competent practice educators. And this links in with what I've said about providing our practice educators with the right CPD opportunities, providing with communities of practice, so forth. Um, and we also want to give people the opportunity, those practice educators that might have not had students for the last two years and become dormant, to refresh themselves. So, for example, there is um, a PEPS refresh course that's being piloted within the region um, that might be rolled out on, on a fully re regional basis to support some of that. Next slide, please. So where do we want to be in terms of quantity? And, you know, we want to ensure that there are sufficient number of placements for our students within the region. We want to ensure that the work that we've done, again, around the data analytics is used to map up the future supply and demand of our placements and to support then our local authorities and HEIs with their planning. We want sufficient number of practice educators to support our students but we also want to retain our practice educators and we know that's so important. So we're going to be looking at, um, we're planning to look at some kind of regional agreement in the future in relation to retaining and regaining currency. And as mentioned before, we've also got the pilot refresher course. So looking at some of those dormant practice educators coming back into practice education. We've also um, been piloting, we're starting to pilot a practice education database within the central region, um, which will identify hopefully the number of practice educators we have in the region and help us to identify those gaps. So, for example, we might have one local authority where actually there's very few PE, so that will enable us to support that local authority and the region for, to support that local authority in trying to increase their numbers of practice educators. Next slide, please. please. So where do we want to be in terms of sustainability? We want strong partnerships and um, to support the lobbying of practice, uh, lobbying for recognition of practice education. Um, our partners are passionate about practice education, as I'm sure all of us are in this room today. But we want to ensure that practice education has the recognition that it requires and deserves. 
And as a teaching partnership, we want to take forward concerns and thoughts with the relevant bodies such as Social Work England to promote, to promote practice education in not only our region, but also nationally as well. We want partners to have a practice education strategy and as stated before, we have developed a good practice guide around um, a practice education strategy um, we've also got um, partners who are completing the projects where they are completing practice education strategies within those projects so hopefully we can share those good examples with others within the region as well because what we know is a practice education strategy reflects the commitment that an organisation makes to practice education. We want to step towards a more consistent approach we recognise that local authorities and HEIs are all unique. We recognise that. But we also recognise that a more consistent approach in terms of practice education would be really beneficial. So, for example, we've been looking at the PEPS Refresh um, document. And in a few weeks' time, we're going to be doing a PEPS Refresh session, um, which will hopefully um, provide the regions with a, a similar understanding to what that means and what the expectations are. Also, the practice education strategy template um, that we produce provides those consistent structures and content in relation to what a good practice education strategy should look like. Next slide, please. So finally, the final slide is about measuring impact. So we know the impact of what we're doing. What we're doing as a teaching partnership needs to be measured. We need it to have an impact. So we will ensure that we gather feedback from our partners, from students and practice educators informally and, and formally. We want to also look at using the key performance indicators which have been derived from our data analytics. So what we know is by using our data analytics, so the number of placements we have, the number um, we require, so looking at the supply and demand, we can really work with our partners to grow placements. And we can identify in the region where actually placements need to grow. And we can maybe identify more creative ways of growing placements, such as what we've done with student units and, and the practice education projects that we've, we've got at the moment. We also want to consider actually, you know, how are alternative routes into social work impacting upon placements as well? Um, in terms of impacting the placements that are available for, say, BA and MA routes, how is it impacting upon that? We've also put um, part of um, a BASWA working group where we're going to be looking at the quality assurance, um, um, quality assurance, the COPPLE form, and we're going to be looking at how the COPPLE tool and processes can be used on a regional basis to improve the quality of placements. So this will look at actually how can we use the COPPLE effectively and how can the processes around the COPPLE be consistent with, within the West Midlands region. That's all from me. So now you will see a clip from um, an, a local authority on their perspective of, of the practice education strategy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Helen Stanley. I manage the Social Work Academy in Worcestershire across adults and children. I'm also a practice educator. So in Worcestershire, so that's Worcestershire County Council People Directorate and Worcestershire Children's First, this is how we are involved with the teaching partnership. We're also involved in key initiatives such as the PEPS Refresh, the Practice Educator Strategy Working Group and the Collaboration Working Group. We liaise a lot with the programme board team about key initiatives, resources, and we access the teaching partnership newsletter and disseminate this amongst our practitioners. So as a local authority, the teaching partnership has enabled us to develop strong relationships and networks with our partner agencies and our colleagues across the West Midlands Teaching Partnership. In particular, the CPD offer, the teaching partnership website, the teaching partnership newsletter, 
programme team and the launch events have supported us to stay up to date with current social work practice, research and the change in landscape. The, the teaching partnership has funded several practice educator masterclasses, which our practice educators have benefited from. For example, Siobhan McLean's reflective supervision models and theories at Worcestershire County Hall. In addition, the Coventry Practice Educator Conference has been excellent for two years running. The diversity has been a golden thread throughout the teaching partnership. And we had a masterclass funded for our Celebrating Social Work Week last September. This was called Promoting Diversity and Equality in Practice Learning by Dr. Prosper Teven. It was an excellent event and very well attended with good feedback. Our practice educators have also benefited from resources such as theory cards, reflection cards and social work postcards. We've also received books and resources from the teaching partnership from the Train the Trainer sessions. These have been invaluable and supported reflective supervision with our students and newly qualified social workers. Hello everyone, my name is Pete Walker. I'm the PE Faculty Lead at the Social Work Academy in Worcestershire. The challenges are obviously COVID-19 and the impact this has on individual practice educators. I feel that you need to turn the challenge into an opportunity. The social profession must go on and it's how you adapt to the virtual world at the moment. Student social workers still need placements and it is how you as a team, um, individual PE, workplace supervisor, accommodate this. You have to be more creative with PCFs. Um, it is achievable but very different to the traditional way of the student being based in a team. You must seek guidance from BASWA, Social Work England and West Midlands Teaching Partnership. Practice education is a vital part of social work and we are the gatekeepers to the social work profession. We would welcome a consistent PE regional offer, which would provide a standard approach and raise the status, recognition and accolade of the PE role. We would also like to see a commitment to a PE strategy across the partnership in terms of equality and diversity. CPD opportunities need to be provided for all practitioners at, at all levels. Thank you, Dr. Clear. And again, for those that took part in that video and all of the videos, we're really grateful to our partners for finding the time for that. So you've now heard where we were where we are, where we want to be. Um, and we made um, a conscious effort during our action planning for the 2021-2022 iteration of the teaching partnership to add all these things into that action plan. Um, so on the screen now is a shameless plug to our social media and online presence, where we'd like you to follow us and um, follow our journey along that and feel free to get in touch with us if you've got any questions. We're really happy to network with other teaching partnerships out there as well. Um, so I'll hand over to Laura now just to, I know you've been working on collating all the questions. We know that sometimes people can't see the chat depending on where things have come from. So again, I think um, you said at the beginning, raise your hand or use the little high five face person. And if you can't see the chat, we'll try and come to you um, and take your questions verbally as well. So thank you from all of us. Thanks Zoe. So we have got some um, questions in the chat. Um, there's been a few questions around payment um, for practice educators and local authorities, which has been addressed by Kate um, from Social Work England, who's been managing the chat. Um, also, some um, regarding annotation for practice education, which again, um, Kate from Social Work England has answered. So we won't come to any of those questions that have been um, answered as the chat's been going. Um, I'll just come to some um, of the questions and comments. So first of all, Dale from the Developing Together Social Work Teaching Partnerships put a, um, a very interesting comment. Um, 
about being a much smaller teaching partnership but having very similar challenges and achievements to our teaching partnership so that's very reassuring and um, thanks for that dale so raise your hand if you wanted to um, say anything um, further about that and i know this links into the teaching partnership network and um, the teaching partnerships coming together to to address and work on and sort of share ideas about all these ongoing challenges that we face so i'll come um to the question first um, of the question. So there's been two questions raised that are quite similar, so by Stephanie and Rebecca, about how um, independent um, or off-site practice educators fit into the strategy. And um, that question has been built upon by Rebecca about um, smaller external and voluntary organisations fit into that um, strategy. So I'll just start by answering the first part of that question about smaller or independent organisations. So this is something we've given um, a lot of thought to and, and is something that we're going to um, be taking forward around those really valuable um, private and voluntary organisations providing placements to students within the region um, that is really recognised and we know um, when at the start of the presentation when I talked about that um, impact of COVID-19 we know that a lot of um, the smaller organisations have been particularly hit um, and so I found it difficult to provide placements but absolutely we're working with um, our employer partners and HEIs and utilising all the um, private and voluntary organisations um, and some um, non-statutory placements within local authorities to make sure that students are getting that really good quality placements and really using all that variety because um, we know what they can bring the, those placements can bring so just in terms of it, the um, independent practice educator aspect of that um, I think the question was linking towards how um, they would be able to to link in with um, our strategy in particular. Now I know some of the, um, Zoe, I'll hand over to yourself because I know the PEPS refresh um, webinar that's going to take place will include some detail on independent practice educators. Yeah, so the, the PEPS refresh webinar looks at what the Basla PEPS refresh says about independent practice educators, off-site practice educators and on-site work-based supervisors. At the moment, that's only available to book onto for those within our partnership. But we are looking at recording the sessions that we put on and making resources available on our website. So if that is something that, that you're interested in, it will probably be put on the website after it happens at the end of this month. So it'll probably be, be early April um, and there should be something in there that, that might be able to look at that. But it is what the PEPS refresh says. So you know the the main thing to look at is is the pets refresh document guidance around that thanks zoe so the next question um zoe i'll come back to you sorry putting you on the spot twice because i know this is something you worked on from helen about do we renew the pep certificate every two years to demonstrate maintenance of currency um, as per the peps refresh and I know you it's, like a, it's a really good question. It's um, a Coventry University, Amanda Fitchett, one of the PEPS course leads there, really passionate um, about the certification and currency. Um, and we actually developed a learner log alongside the certificate that goes out. And it actually demonstrates how people can regain their currency and retain their currency. Looking at these things that people may be doing that isn't necessarily having a student, but still meets that threshold of keeping their currency, allowing people to look at things differently and notice that, you know, they may have had an apprentice or they may have um, supported a colleague who was doing their PEPS refresh, who was doing their PEPS course, um, all the things that are in line with that. So, um, yeah, that's that's something that we thought we needed to include and the idea is that these certificates and templates are given out and monitored by the professional because we have to recognize that the social workers have the accountability to use that document to go into their supervisions or go to their um their hr their um, training and development workforce development areas whatever it is for their organization and say look i'm a practice educator my currency is going to run out have you got a student for me and if not what else can i do so there's there's kind of an onus on the the individual there to 
to keep that up to date and present that evidence should it ever be asked for. Thanks, Zoe. Um, so if anybody else has got, uh, we've got one final, um, two final questions, sorry, that are already um, been posed. So if anybody's got any other questions just whilst we're um, answering these, then please pop your hand up or pop them in the chat. So we had a question from Samia about um, the requirement for the practice educator course. I think you mean the refresher course. Um, is that through the employer or can it be booked on privately? Um, so I think we would probably need to have a conversation around um, individual circumstances for that because this is something that had been initially developed um, between a particular local authority and a HEI um, based on th the demand for that and it has been rolled out through the um, region. Um, but I, th I think we just would need to check with the um, course provider and with that local um, authority. Um, I think depending on what your questions on some of the courses, because I've just noticed similar ones popping up about booking onto the pets refresh and things like that. If you are internal to the West Midlands Social Work Teaching Partnership, that those details of our CPD have gone out on um, an email to all, work, all workforce development leads. But you can also go to the website, sign up to the newsletter or email us and ask for details of that. And like Laura said, um, if, if you're external to the Social Work Teaching Partnership, you're a private practice educator, an independent practice educator, and you support people in our region, get in touch, let us know, and we will see if the, the allocation of spaces allows for that, because we want to support as many people as possible. But um, yeah, the, the details have gone out. Thank you. I'm just going to jump in there, if that's OK, because we're just at time. Um, but that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. And I know that you've shared your contact details and, and ways of people getting in touch with you. And it's just been really insightful and it's uh, generated lots of chat. So always that's always a good sign. Thank you so much. And, you know, absolute um, props to you for sharing videos in a presentation. That's always a technical nightmare. So you did brilliantly. That's Thank Adam, you. So yeah, well done, Adam, hiding awesome in the background. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just to finish off this session, um, Kate's already popped in the chat the survey. So if you want to complete that, that'd be great. It's specifically about this session and it's just really quick. Take you no more than two minutes um, to give your feedback on this session. We really hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, if you're a social worker as well, that you can log this as CPD and reflect on the session um, as part of your CPD and log it in your online account with us um, if you choose. Uh, so it's been really great to have you all here. Thanks again to the West Midlands Teaching Partnership for all their input um, we hope to see you at something else over the next remaining day or so at social work week we hope you've enjoyed what you've come to so far so thanks again and we'll say goodbye for now thank you very much thank you thanks bye, -bye.